angels to take me to paradise. And so these men lived their lives in such a way that angels were going to be the ones to take them to their eternal destiny. Point number two, we cannot allow failures to fall to our future, nor to frustrate our fellowship. I believe that this speaks to Bathsheba. Bathsheba is an interesting character because she willingly lays with the king, knowing who the king is, knowing who her husband is, knowing who her father is. And she does it. Everybody knows who this woman is. Even people started to whisper, isn't that the wife of Uriah? What's she doing going in the king's chamber? And so now, she got this scarlet A on her chest. The king tried to hide it, but couldn't hide it. So he had the husband killed. She's thinking that maybe her husband was killed, not because of some grand plot, but because of her sin. But God made it clear that, no, I want the death of your son because of your sin. She marries the king, has three more children. And then what eventually happens is that David is about to die. And so Bathsheba understands that David is about to die, and she knows what Adonijah is plotting. So it was Bathsheba who called the prophets together. It was Bathsheba who called some of the mighty men together. And she said, I'm going to go to my husband and tell him what's happening. And I need for y'all to confirm the story because you know it's true. And so when Bathsheba told the king and then Nathan followed in and told the king, then David got up out of his sickbed because of the words of Bathsheba and made his final decree that Bathsheba, your son, is going to become king. Now even though Bathsheba, her son is now king, she still is identified as the wife of Uriah. She still is going to be remembered in Israel as the woman who cheated on her husband with David. She's still going to be identified as the only reason why her son got this position is because of what she's able to do in the bedroom. That is the reputation. But Solomon put an end to all of that, that when he ascended to the throne, he put a seat, not on his left hand, but on his right hand. And he said, Mama, you're going to come and sit right here next to me. Just like Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the throne of God, Bathsheba, regardless of her faults, regardless of her failures, regardless of her frustration, for so many years is now seated at the right hand of the throne of Solomon. That was her end. That was her testimony that no matter what anybody else said, she got to sit somewhere that nobody else gets to sit. It was a place of honor. And so no matter what your history is, no matter what your past is, you live your life in such a way that Jesus knows your name, that you have a place of honor in his kingdom, that you get to heaven and spend eternity with him. Don't you let anybody beat you down and talk about what you used to be and what you used to do. See, you, that's in the past. You move forward and you focus on your future. Third and final point, we may be in debt, we may be distressed, we may be discontented, but we serve a God who can take me in my mess and transform it into a message. Just like these mighty men, a message of strength, a message of dependence, a message of faith, a message of commitment and conviction, a message of boldness, and a message of loyalty. So where do you stand on this morning? I know I've gone over my time again, but I stopped by this morning just to let you know that all of these individuals, this can be your life. Maybe you have found yourself in the seat of Uriah's wife. 
Maybe you have found yourself being a Bathsheba. Maybe you even know a Bathsheba. But we see through the power of God that even a person like Bathsheba can be bailed out of her situation. Let Jesus bail you out this morning. Maybe you're a Christian and have fallen short of his glory. Let Jesus bail you out this morning. Learn the lessons that we have studied today. Obey his word, his will, his way. Come to the king and let him turn you from a nobody into a somebody. You're not a Christian, you need to become one. Repent and be baptized. That's what you need to do. Let God forgive you of your sins. Let him add, let him add you to his kingdom. While together we stand and sing the song that has been selected.